Okay, so now we are looking at uh, shop floor planning and job sequencing. Here, we simply look at uh, the sequencing rules that are valuable uh, in every organization. This uh, topic is very, very important because uh, it actually looks at um, the sequencing rules that apply in every organization. Of course, uh, we know that almost every organization use uh, the first come first serve basis where you can only attend to a customer who came at uh, who came earlier than the other customer because the customers may argue that why are you attending to uh, this other client when I came early? So in the sequencing rules, right? But the customer that may that could have come early. Maybe he has a complication. If you start a clinic, you find that he maybe he just needs a, a, special, a certain doctor who is not available. So should other people suffer at the expense of the other um, patient or a customer that has come? Okay. Maybe if it's in the bank, you discover that um, you find a customer that has come early but his account is blocked. And the, of course, the only person who can unblock that account is the manager. And if that manager is not around, you find that that person can, can keep on waiting in the queue. So can the queue be stuck? Can the, can the queue be stagnant? No. Other people can be attended too. All right, so the, but the first sequencing rule that we know is the first come, first serve uh, sequencing. Then the other one, the shortest processing time, there are only four sequencing rules that we use as we look at the shop floor planning and job sequencing. There are four sequencing rules. The first one is the first come, first serve sequencing rule. We have the shortest processing time. We have the critical ratio. And of course, we have the ADS due date. All right, now there are these, so to evaluate each sequencing rule, there are three criteria that we use to evaluate each sequencing rule. So it be it the first come, first serve uh, sequencing rule, be it the shortest processing time rule, or be it the critical ratio, or be it the LS due date. There are three criteria that we use. The first one is the average number, the average flow time, of course, the average number of jobs in the system, and then the average job lateness. So these are the three criteria that we use to evaluate each sequencing rule. All right, so now, um, the floor time is a time available to finish working on a project or on a job. So if you, an individual can finish working on a job fast, then it, the efficiency will be measured, all right? And then if there are few jobs that are pending to work on, then meaning that an individual is efficiency is okay because there's only few customers. An example, if it's in a bank, if you have few customers lining up for a queue or for a service, means that that, cash, that cashier is efficiency can be upgraded because at least you can measure, you can understand that this cashier is okay because he has few customers waiting to be attended to. So the, the number of jobs in the system, if there are few or then even an engineer who has a garage and then there are few vehicles that are waiting to be serviced or to be worked on, then you can measure his efficiency properly to say, yes, you can take the vehicle they set in the garage because you know that an engineer can work, finish working on uh, can you finish working on your job faster or fast? All right. Okay. So floor time, completion time. If it's minimal, then the efficiency is okay. So the smaller of each of the three to evaluate the sequencing rule is better. Meaning the smaller of the average floor time, which is the completion time for a job and uh, average number of jobs in the system, if the numbers are very small, 
or if it is in weeks or days, if there are a few days that you can work on an assignment that somebody has given you to do, at least the better. If somebody can be given an assignment to work on and he has finished it in the shortest possible time, which is a completion time, which is also called the flow time, it's okay. You cannot take an assignment to somebody who has a, a several number of tasks that he's supposed to work on. So in a number of tasks, the number of tasks or number of jobs that are there, if somebody has a lot of jobs that are supposed to work on, then you are you can risk taking your car even to that garage. All right, then then you can only accept the minimum lateness, which is average job lateness, as the third uh, criteria that we use to evaluate the sequencing rules. So the minimum of the possible lateness, the better, because at least if you are late, if you're supposed to report for work at eight hours, you report at 8.15, um, the boss will not be that upset. They will, at least they will understand. 15 minutes is not too bad. But the lateness, if somebody reports at 10 hours and the reporting time is, uh, is at eight hours, then that lateness is beyond limit. Okay, so the major sequencing rule used by main organizations is the first come first step, but the firm may also consider other sequencing rules such as the shortest processing time, the critical ratio and earliest due date. The EDD means the earliest due date. Okay, so this topic is the uh, longest topic. Same as uh, should I say, this topic and inventory management, they are the longest topics in um, in POM, production operation management. Now we can get to an example here where you say an ABZ company currently process jobs based on the first come first step, uh, but wonders if the other sequencing rules are better. The first come first step sequencing rule is shown in the table below. So we have the, these jobs, these are jobs. Okay, so we can get this concept of an example that we need to understand. And uh, once you understand this one, as we look at any other question from any question exam papers, it will not be that difficult to go for. All right then, so we have the job sequence here for the first one. We are talking about the job 2226, the other one is 224, the 229. We also have the 227, the 225. The processing time, the time taken to work on the you know, on a job. All right, we have the four, we have the six. Then uh, we also have um, the other one here where we are talking about um, the processing time for the other job, which is 224 is six. The 229 is eight, the 227 is 10, the 225, we are saying here, given five. The two dates for each of the jobs that we are looking at for 226 is uh, 10, the other one 224 is 15, the 229 is nine, the 227 is eight, the 225 is six. They are required. Now we rank the following jobs based on the, the evaluating criteria. that is, um, um, um the, the average flow time, the average jobs in the system, and every job lateness. The minimum of each of these three uh, criteria, the better. All right, then we have so now here we are looking at the first one where we are talking about the first camp, first step, the second one in shortest processing time, the critical ratio, and the is due date. So the, the table that has been given here. Is for the first cam first step sequencing table, and then other sequencing rules like the shortest processing time, the critical ratio, the latest due date. All these other sequencing rules they come from the first cam first step sequencing. All right. So since here the question in an exam they only give you the table which is the first cam first step sequencing rule table. That is just what to give you. I'll give you an exam. Then other sequencing rules they come from the first come first step sequencing. Now, as we look at the required, we are ranking the jobs based on the three criteria: the average flow time, the average number of jobs in the system, and the average job lateness. So here we have to go, regardless of um, 
Okay, the sequencing rule, we are looking at four columns. So here we should extend this table now as we're looking at the solution. So the way it is, don't temper with it, the table, based on the first come, first served, let it be the way uh, it is. We are simply saying that for the job sequence, uh, 226 is the first job that came through. The 224 was the seconding job. The 229 was the third job that came like that number. And then it's more like this is, if this is uh, the vehicle one, number one, this came through uh, in the garage, that's the first one that you're supposed to attend on, to work on. Then the second one, 224, then getting down to 229, 227, 225. And then the processing times in days, we are taking four job, 226, we're taking four days um, to finish working on it. The due date is 10 days. I think we, for that one, we, we are within the boundary because if you pass the due date, then you are late. All right, so now the other job, 224 was taking about uh, six days to be, to, to be worked on. The 229 was taking eight days to be worked on. The 227 was taking 10 days to be worked on. The 225 was taking five days to be worked on. All right, then we get down to the solution now. We are evaluating this table, the first table, which is the first come, first step. So we don't temper with the table. So we just put it the way they are. Now, flow time is the cumulative frequency of processing time. So we are just simply saying this is the cumulative frequency. Okay, so this is the, the cumulative um, frequency of processing time. So cumulative CF is just the CF. Okay, so this is the cumulative frequency of uh, processing time. Okay, so meaning we are just getting the processing time and then we are finding the cumulative frequency of that one. All right, so what we are going to do here? So flow time, we are simply saying a four. Now this four plus six, we are getting to a 10. Then this one plus this one, we are getting to 18. This one plus that one, we are getting to 28. This one plus that one, we are getting to 33. All right, so this is the, the, the fourth uh, column as we are getting down to uh, the first come, first saved basis. All right, and then what is just needed here? is to understand that we have five columns regardless of the sequencing rule that we are looking at. All right then, so getting down to the other one where we're looking at the job lateness, should you pass the due date, then you are late. So for the first aspect, first agenda, we are not late because we have not passed the due date. So here four minus the due date is four, the due, the due date is 10. And then we have finished working on the first job 226 in four days time. So meaning that here we are not late, our lateness is zero because we haven't yet passed the due date of 10. All right, we're getting down to 224. 224, the flow time is 10, and then our due date is 15. We are, are actually not late as well. Getting down to 229, we have the due date of nine, and then we have finished working on 229 in 18 days. We are late by nine, all right? Then we are comparing these two for lateness. The other one is our 227, the flow time is to date, and then the due date is eight, so we are late by 20 days. Getting down to 225, 225, our uh, flow time is 33. And then the due date is six. We are late by 27 days. So if these ones, according to the question, they are in days. Is it clear so far? Mm, what's the purpose of the flow time? Okay, so the purpose of the flow time is, is we are just accumulating to find the aggregate time 
in fact, the total time that is required for you or for an individual or for an employee to finish working on all the tasks that he or she has been given. All right. So that is just about what goes on. Is that clear? Mm. So this means this employee is, is doing all the jobs here. 226, 224. That's why we are finding the cumulative flow time. Yes, please. OK, thank you. So the cumulative flow time is coming in because of um, those jobs that are there. So for each of those, for each of the jobs given, we are actually trying to sum up. So it's just a four here, getting down here. Yeah, four plus six is 10, 10 plus eight is 18, 18 plus 10, you're getting 20, 20 plus five is a three. So to get the job lateness for it, um, the job lateness for each activity or for each job, you just the, uh, subtract the flow time, the completion time for that job minus the due date. So here, we are not late at all for the 226 because we are within boundaries. Then the other one, we are not late because the due, the due date is um, uh, 15, our flow time is 10. For 229, our flow time is 18. We have taken too much time to finish working on 229. Our due date was nine, so we are late by nine. The other one, 227, we have we have the 28th completion time, and then the due date is eight. We are late by 20. The, the 225, we have the three, the 33, and then the due date, so we are late by 27. So we can evaluate this table by using the three criteria that we use to evaluate each of the tables that we have here. So we're getting down to the first one where we're saying the average flow time, the average number of jobs in the system, and average job lateness. These are the three criteria we use to evaluate each sequencing rule. So we can get down to the flow time, the momentum frequency, like I mentioned, of the processing time and the time available to finish working on the job. Job lateness means that when we pass the due date, then we are late. So they find the average flow time. So we find the average of the flow time here. So this flow time, average of that one, then also average of the lateness. So we can get average flow time, just addition of those, which is 18.6 here, just from the table, you can find the average of the flow time, getting down to 18.6. Average job lateness, we are getting 11.2 for the lateness. Getting down to average number of jobs in the system, it is the total, the formula is total flow time over total processing time. So average of the lateness, you just find the mean of the lateness, just this one, average of the flow time, average of these ones, average of the job lateness, getting down to the, the last one, average number of jobs in the system is the total flow time over total processing time. So the total of the flow time divided by the total processing time is the how you find the average number of jobs in the system. So average number of jobs in the system, you are simply saying the total flow time over the total processing time. All right. So that is just about what goes on. So the total flow time over the processing time, which is 93 over 33, which is 2.82 jobs. So on average, we have 2.8, just about, just don't round off, let it just be. So 2.82 jobs. So on average, you can have approximately three customers or three jobs or three vehicles in your garage. So if people have brought vehicles or cars in the garage that you need to work on as an engineer, then you have approximately three cars. Somebody will know that, okay, there are a few cars that you have, all right? So they can obviously tell you to say, okay, it's fine. I can leave my vehicle as well. 
you can work on it. When can I come and get it? You mention after one week or after five days, they can understand because they'll know that there are few vehicles that you are able to work on because there are only three, an example, because we have 2.82 jobs. If, it, if this is how you can measure my efficiency as a, a cashier, then I have approximately three customers waiting for a service in a bank, then you can identify that, okay, is managing the queue, all right? It's managing the queue. You can measure my efficiency. And obviously, as a manager, you can just understand that, okay, you can work under pressure, you can manage. But if I have a number of customers, whereby even others that are standing outside the banking hall, then it means that my efficiency is questioned. Why are you having so many customers in the queue? Why are you not managing the queue? Then it will be a problem. That's why I mentioned that you can accept the minimum lateness for someone. The few jobs means that he's working very okay. Then getting down to completion time, if it's a minimum completion time, is okay as well. The minimum of each of these is okay. So meaning as we select the sequence among the four sequences that we are looking at right about now, we are going to select the sequence that minimizes each of these three criteria, the average flow time, the average job lateness, and the average number of jobs in the system. All right then, so we have evaluated the first table, which is the first come first table. Getting down to the second one, we are looking at the shortest processing time. So for the first come first step, you just use the original data information that has been given uh, in the question. So meaning, if we are to go an extra amount, getting down to um, the other agenda here, like here for this pamphlet, 226, 229, it's just the same concept here where they are ranking based on the first come first step, the solid processing time, as we are navigating here so that you see where we are looking at now, the time to promise the delivery. So this is the first come first step. So this one was the first job that came to 26, 229, number two, 224, number three, 225, number four. I have to make mention here that um, the processing time is also called time to promise delivery. The processing time is also called time to promised delivery. All right then, so getting down here, this one, uh, we are simply now saying, we go to the, um, the shortest processing time. So we rank the jobs based on the shortest processing time. So of course, this one should be a job number one to be ranked because it, it shows that the processing time is four days. The second job is this one. So in, in, in short, and then the other one is uh, this number three to be worked on, number four to be worked on. Then we have number five to be worked on. So these are the, this is the way we're going to rank based on the shortest processing time. So we will rank based on the shortest processing time. All right. Now, getting down to here, we are getting uh, processing times, so uh, 226, number four, five, six, according to the processing time, we are ranking them according to the processing times. But what it means here is that uh, we also need to actually uh, get the appropriate uh, due date. All right, so appropriate due date that we have here, the due date that we have, when we get processing time four, as the shortest according to the ranking, building up from there in the way they're supposed to be, then you will get the respective due dates for all those jobs that we have. So due date is to 10 here according to it. But all of these other sequencing rules, they are coming from the mother. The, the mother is the first come, first served. We're talking about uh, the child should respect the parents, the mother. So like this is the first come, first step. So other sequencing rules, they come from the mother, which is the first come, first step. And for this reason, we, it is because of the fact that um, 
every other organization uh, use the first come, first same basis. Uh, people actually argue, all right? Because when you came early, obviously, you should be the first person to be attended to. You actually argue that I brought my car one week ago, but why haven't you worked on it? All right, so that's why we're looking at this other, the other sequencing rules, they come from the first come, first same sequencing rule. All right, so now getting down to the suite. So we are ranking these, but we are also getting the respective due dates as we are ranking for each job that we are talking about. All right, so we get down to um, the SPT. So here, this SPT, we do the same like what we did uh, to the first come first step, regardless of the sequencing rule, we have actually five columns that we need to actually look at. So we have the job, the present time, the due date, the flow time, and the job lateness for each sequencing rule. Regardless of the sequencing rule, we have all those uh, five columns that we look at. Now, evaluating this table, we have the Average flow time, we find the average flow time, average job lateness, just like what we did to the first camp, first step basis. All right, then. So we're getting down to the flow time. We are getting the average of it, which is 16.8. From there, average job lateness, we are getting 8.4. Okay, but these basis we're looking about days. So be careful in an exam. So these are days. So among the three, we are going to do a summary table. Among the four of them, actually, because there are four criteria we're looking at, which is a, the first come, first save, they're getting down to uh, the, the, short, the shortest processing time, the latest due dates, and the critical ratio. So we have these three. And getting the, uh, the average number of jobs in the system, we simply say total flow time, then we divide by the total processing time. All right. Okay, so now critical ratio. We have done the shortest processing time as a second sequencing rule that we're from looking at right about now. Then getting down to the other one, we are looking at a critical ratio. Here we rank the jobs based on the minimum ratio by using the formula. Critical ratio is equal to due date uh, divided by the processing time. That's how you find the critical ratio. So we rank the jobs based on the minimum ratio getting here if it is a tie for the ratios there is one thing we consider which i'll explain so the first one is this one ranking number one then number two is this one uh, number three is 1.2 then here it depends on uh since there's a tie here 2.5 2.5 if it is a tie here for the ratios you choose the one which has the shortest processing time. So getting down to 226 and 224, we will see which one we can go. Okay, so this is 10 divided by 4, 2.4, 15 divided by 6, 2.5. So since we are dividing due date of processing time, so this 226 will be number four because it, it has the processing time of four, better off. Okay, because here we can't make a decision on these two now because there's a time. So here, because this has a four, which is the processing time here, better off than the six. So this one will be number five. Because here, the shorter processing time, processing time is time available that you need to finish working on a task that has been given to or assigned to you. So here, the four is better off. So on the table here, we are going to have the first one is uh, 227. Okay, that's the, the processing time. We get the, the respect to processing time and due dates for the 227. Then number two is 229. Okay, from here on the rankings. Number three is 225. Number four is 226, like I mentioned, because of the processing time there, because we're tied here. So we get the one which are the shortest processing time. All right, then getting down to the other one, two to four. Regardless of the sequencing rule, we are actually saying we have five columns, the job, the processing time, the due date, the flow time, the job lateness. These are 
the the ones that we need. All right, so we find the cumulative frequency of processing time. So there's a 10 here. Then there's an eight here, which is giving us 18. Then five giving us 23. Then 23, 24, giving us 27, and then giving us 33. We are accumulating that. Should we pass the due date, then we are late. Our due date is eight for the first one for two job, two towards seven, meaning that our job lateness is two for the first one. Getting down to the second one, the lateness is nine by subtracting that. For 225, the lateness is 17. For 226, the lateness is 17 as well. For 224, the lateness is 33 minus 15, which is 18. So this is about what is going on. Then we can evaluate the table when finding the average flow time, regardless, like I mentioned, of the sequencing rule. We actually find the, the three criteria that we use, the average flow time, the average job lateness, average number of jobs in the system. So we are getting 22.2, uh, 12, 12.6, just from the information. Then total flow time over to the processing time. So this is how you get that one. Even for the other one, just like that. Then we're getting the average number of jobs in the system, 3.36. So for this one, the average number of jobs in the system, we're getting 3.36. The minimum of the jobs that are there in the system, the better. So that uh, for management, because it means that the efficiency is actually very okay. We can move on now, getting down to the other parameters that we need for the last one, which is talking about the, the LS due date. So the three tables, we have the first come first term. We are getting down to LS due date, the critical ratio. All right, so LS due date, we are simply saying it is the, the total floor time. To pay for the floor. So now here we are going to rank the jobs based on the LS due date. So when ranking, we migrate, we go just about, we go to um, the mother here, like I mentioned about the fact that the, each other sequencing rule comes from the mother, that is the first come first sequencing. So here we'll be ranking based on the due date. So in the due date, this one will be job number one, based on the due date. This one will be number two, number three, then number four, then number five, based on the due date. So we are ranking the job, the jobs based on the, the areas due date. All right then. So on the areas due date, we get the jobs the way they are. So meaning. As we run based on the due dates, we get also the respective processing time. Just okay, um, foremost, before I proceed, uh, people following? We're following. So for all these um, processes, it's it's just the way we run the due date that makes the answers vary. Yes. So it is just because of the rank, just because of the ranking, that makes the answers vary because of the sequencing. Because we arrange them based on which sequencing we are using. So if we're using the first come, let the table be the way it is. As we are using the the shortest processing time, we rank them based on the processing time. Um, Meaning based on processing time. So for a due date, for the due date, you rank them based on the earliest due date. So you just arrange the due dates in order according to the way they're supposed to be. So you know which job should start based on the earliest due date. So which one is the earliest due date that we can actually start working on as about right about now. All right. So we move on to the 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 last one, which is the earliest due date critical ratio. This was just for ranking to know which one has the minimum ratio that we can start working on and building up just like about that way. Getting down to the LS due date rank based on the LS due date. So it's a, a, the way it's supposed to be. 
We have the job sequencing, the processing time, the due date, the flow time, the job lateness. All right, so average flow time, we find the average of the flow time, then average job lateness, or the job lateness, then average number of jobs in the system, which is total flow time over the total processing time. So we are just using the same concept that we need. The, this is what has happened. So what this concept, the concept is what is very, very important when looking at uh, job flow planning and job sequencing. So now, from here, we can do a summary table. The smaller the flow time, there are fewer jobs in the system and smaller job lateness are better among the jobs. We now run the sequencing rules and recommend the better sequence. So now, a summary table, all these figures are calculated. So the sequencing rule on the first come first step, the average flow time was 18.6. And then for the shortest processing time, the average flow time was 16.8. All these figures are from what has already been calculated here. Then the other one was 20.6 for LS due date. Okay. Then uh, all these, so I'm here. We get down to the uh, the critical ratio was 22.2. The LS due date was actually 20.6. Getting down to the ranking, so meaning among the all the four, the one that was ranking first is the shortest processing time, which was ranking first here based on the average flow time. So meaning you you, you are able to uh, finish working on a job uh, among the three uh, sequence among the four sequencing rules. The shortest processing time shows an indicator that it is ranking first based on average flow time. Getting on the lateness is 8.4, which is also the shortest processing time. Getting on the average number of jobs in the system is 2.55, which is also ranking the first year, meaning there are few jobs in the system when you're looking at the shortest processing time. So in a nutshell here, we're simply saying that shortest, the shortest processing time has actually dominated among the four sequencing rules. So it has dominated among the four sequencing rules. So this is the one that should be recommended to management. All right, because it's ranking phase among the sequencing rules. So as we look at other examples from other question papers or other in the pamphlet or, and all that, it actually, this is what goes on. If you had a situation where there was a variation here, would have recommended each, of, each one of them, if the SPT was ranking first on the average flow time, would have recommended it on average flow time by man to management. Uh, then if it was ranking not first on the average job lateness, would have recommended which one was ranking first. Maybe if the first come first step was ranking first, would have recommended first come first step based on average job lateness. And then if he, the critical ratio was ranking phase boys on the number of jobs in the system, would have recommended it also uh, individually, just like that. But in this case, we are simply saying the shortest processing time has dominated among the four sequencing rules. So this is the first part of the shop flow planning and job sequencing. So now we're going to get to the second part of it right about now. Then the other part of it will be done in the other class because that one also is a uh, needs a serious attention that I need to explain in detail because it requires the aspect of the Gantt chart. So sequencing, uh, shop flow planning and job sequencing has three components, three parts of it. The first one is on sequencing rules that we're from looking at. Then the other one we look at the um, the the change of a cost. So let's let's uh, get into the change of a cost. The second part for the sake of this uh, class and uh, the other one to be done in the other class which is a gantt chart to mark the end of the uh, of the topic all right so the other one is the change of a cost just the second part of the uh, shop for planning so let's look at this one now the change of a cost this is a cost involved in changing production from one job to another and we always select the smallest possible change of a cost so we always select the smallest possible change over cost. So the cost involved in changing production from one job to another. And we always select the smallest possible change over cost. All right. So we can have an example here. This example, um, what is important is the concept. Other questions that are there in the 
even in the pamphlet, uh, we will look at them as we move, as we go, there's no problem. So here there's uh, uh, these solutions here that from even from the pamphlet, the average flow time and all that. So this one, you can also have a look at it. Then uh, the aspect of a Gantt chart, which we are going to do in another class. And then this is a change of a cost. Okay, cost involved in changing production from one job to another. This is the table that I'm trying to explain. So we will get down to, to read. All right, the shortest is what I'm so now. Getting down to here. A PC company has a foreign cost in the table below. Find the cost associated with the following changeable cost in the table uh, below. Now, when you are talking about a job that precedes, we are simply talking about the, the starting job. And then we have a following job, a job that follows after the other one. All right, then. So the job that precedes. So here, First and foremost, what do we do from here? We, our the objective of every organization is to minimize costs. Cost minimization technique is what is just most important. So here, what goes on is that we need to just realize that we have the smallest possible cost. If it's 1,000, you mark it like that, 1,000, 1,000, meaning we are going, if there are the smallest cost, there are three of them, meaning you're going to have three job sequences. And among those sequences, we are going to select one that will give us the smallest possible cost. If there are two smaller costs in the table, we are going to have two uh, job sequences and we'll pick one that has given us the smallest possible cost. All right then. So here we have the two smaller costs. We have the 1,000, and then we have also 1,000. Okay, so from here, determine the job sequence and the associated total change over cost. So if there are two smallest costs, then we have two job sequences. The proceeding job simply means that it is the starting job and that since the smallest cost is 1,000, like in this example, there are two of them, then we should have two job sequences, but need to select a smaller a sequence with a smaller cost. So we can start with, with this 1,000 here. So meaning that the starting job is job B, if we start with this one. Of course, we're also going to go for another job, which is the 1,000 here. All right, so, but meaning, if we start with A, it doesn't matter. There's no conflict of interest here. We can start with any at any time, for as long as we know that we are going to have two sequences and between the two, we're going to select the one with the smaller um, value. All right, so do we start with the, the 1,000? Okay. If we start with the 1,000 here for B, we are going to have B starting job. So B has started. And then the follower is A, because B has started in this one, it's this one, so B has started, the follower is A, okay? Then when, so so B has started, the follower job, this is the job that follows, this is the job that precedes. So B has started, and you put the 1,000 here, then follower is A. So in A, the smallest possible cost is 1,000, so the follower will be C. So B has started, which is 1,000. The follower is A, all right? Then A has now started because it has followed B. So in the smallest cost in this column for A, because it has now started is 1,000. So that 1,000 is this one. Then you go for C because this 1,000 is on C. Then C has started. The smallest in C is actually 2050, all right? So 2050, but it, of course, you look at 2050, A has already been taken. A is already there, A has already been taken. You build up 2007, so you can go for D, okay? So a D, well, 2007, we go for D. 
the smaller possible cost in D, so in D, the smallest possible cost in D is 4,200. Of course, if it's 3,000, but A is taken, so you can build up, go for 4,200, then you go for E. Okay, so for that, you go for E. In E, the smallest possible cost in E is actually 3,000, but D is taken, build up 4,000, A is taken. We build up, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. We build up, we go to F, which is 4,050. F is 4,050. Then 4,050, which is F. Now in F, the smallest possible cost here is a 3,8, but D is taken, or it's getting down to 4,500, B is taken. Getting down 4,600, E is taken. Getting down to 8,000, A is taken. So there's a dash here for F, and the total cost is 12,950. That's sequence one. Of course, we started with this B for 1,000. I mentioned that for the smaller cost, there are two of them. They're going to have two, small, two sequences, and you pick the smaller of the two sequences. All right, then. So we get down to the other one. The other one is the first the other sequence we are going to have. Our A is actually uh, the starting job, and we go for 1,000. So the follower is C, OK? So here, we are going to have A, the follower, 1,000. The follower is C. So for C, we go C as a starting, the smallest possible here is um okay so we are starting a c the c so a has started then we go to c and started here 1000 we go to cc the smallest cost is 2050 but a is taken so we build up to 2700 for d so d is 2700 so we go for d so in d the smaller cost in d is uh, actually uh 3000 but a is taken we build up a little bit we're getting down to e 4200 so that's what we do and we go for e e e the smaller cost in e is actually 3000 okay but d is taken so 3000 d is taken we build up a little bit 4050 so we can go for f all right so f our F here, the smallest possible cost is actually 3,800, but check if that is taken as part of it already. So D has been taken, okay? Then we go for the other one here. So meaning the other one we go for is 4,500, four because a 3,8 uh, is taken. So we go for that one, okay? So F is 4,500 because the D is taken, and the other one is, so meaning we go for four, five, then four, five means we go for B. Okay, so 4,500, you go for B. So in B, now in B, a smaller cost in B is what? In B, the smaller cost is 1,000, but A is taken, 2, 8, D is taken. Then we get to 2,000, F is taken. From the sequence, here, we have to cut the sequence. We've taken what I mean, it has already been there. It can't displace it. Then the other one that we know to look at is for B, we are getting down to all of them here they are taken. So we put the dash, uh, this one. Then the total cost for this sequence is 6450. So between the two, we should go for this sequence. This is what we need that should actually minimize the objective of the firm is to minimize the cost. So we have this sequence here is the optimal sequence that we need to look at. Okay. So this is it on the optimal, optimal sequence. Okay. So on optimal sequence is what we look at. So this marks the second part of the job flow planning and job sequencing. The first part of it is where we cut the sequencing rules, where we will have the first come first step, the shortest processing time, the critical ratios, and the next due date. 
And then the second part is why we look at the change of a cost. All right, then. Is there any questions so far? I have a question. So when looking at these um, these sequences, it's always um, vertically. Like when we're picking, we use the vertical column. Yes, please. The reason, why, the reason why we are using the vertical columns is because we are talking about which one is the preceding job. A preceding job is more like a starting job. So these here, the vertical ones, they are starting. These other side, they are following. They are following our job. Oh. Yeah. So here we have okay. the job, job that follow. The pre, pre, if you look at the predecessor, is the person who was there before. You know what I mean? So this is like the one who starts. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is what happens. Please. Okay, so the term here is we start with preceding, then we follow. Yes. So maybe it was the opposite. Uh -huh. Okay. Is that clear? Yes, it's clear. I was on the second part. I just didn't understand why on C it looked like, uh, no, on the A, like uh -huh. A and C. I thought it would be C, A, but I noticed you you're going vertically, not horizontally. So I just needed clarity. I think it's it makes sense now with the preceding. Okay, yes, thank you very much. So you just have to follow the preceding job, then it, the other job should follow. So the other one, the, the, the third part of this topic, we're going to look at in the next class for now, just the need to revise on it, the sequencing rules, the first come, first serve, the short processing time, Let's do that, the grid correction, then getting to the change over cost, the one which I'm from explaining. And then in the next class, we're going to look at the last part of it, which is the, shop, the, the Johnson's rule and the, the, the Gantt chart. The, the Johnson's rule and the, the, the Gantt chart. This one, um, you can do it in the other, in the other class. So since it is clear so far, so you just need to go through these notes. Then we need to also to have time to come and revise to go through uh, questions from the past papers and the pamphlets. So if since it's clear, uh, we can have the other the other uh, the other subtopic for Johnson's rule in the next class.